folks can hear sound. Yeah, Twitch always seems to like default mute channels for me, so I don't know. It gets me every time. Welcome to the Arcology's launch stream. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, this is a, it's an exciting day for me. Um, my name is Tyler Edders. I'm a polymath artist. I am currently living just north of California, with my wonderful wife and two cats. Um, and Arcology's has been my uh, 2020 sanity project. So I'm so excited to I'll share it with you all. Um, our agenda's down here. Uh, we're going to be going through Fallen Empires, a history. So we're going to talk about where the idea came from, a little bit about the development process, some of the people I collaborated with along the way, and then uh, we're going to we're going to jump into our colleges and build build Tlon together. So if you've got the uh, script installed and a Norns and a Grid, get it set up, and we can go through that together. Then we're going to conclude, and then um, if anyone wants to hang out in Zoom afterwards, I can give you one-on-one -on -one setup help and instructions to make sure you are all set up and good to go. Um, yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll be monitoring chat, so ask me questions. I'm happy to make this as interactive as we can make it. All right, Fallen Empires, a history. Um, so in May of 2020, I got a monom grid. Um, I first saw this curious device in early 2010s, and um, I knew that I was going to get one someday. It wasn't quite right at that time to get one then. Um, it's a really interesting device. There's 128 keys, some lights, no logo, and one USB port, and um, that's all it is. And in being so limited, it's actually everything. So you, there's a whole community of people that develop software for it. You can use it as a MIDI controller. You can control really anything with it. So I got this, and um, I started developing software with Max for Live. Um, I had all these ideas I've been rattling around in my head for a while. So I started just making them, and I was having a ton of fun. I made Cascades, which explores um, all the different combinations of 16th notes you can have in a bar. Uh, I made Conway music in memory of John Conway, who passed away this year. Uh, he, he invented the game of life, which is a really, really interesting cellular automata that um, has all these rules and is kind of like an emergent generative system. Um, so I was making all these applications having fun with that and then um it was time to do something a little bit more ambitious these those previous ones were you know a couple weeks projects uh one or two of them were only like a night or two just a couple hours so i read this book last year called the mushroom at the end of the world uh on the possibility of life in capitalist ruins and I was pretty sure this was going to be a drug book about like psychedelics and stuff, but ends up the word psilocybin and psychedelic isn't used once in the book. It's all about Matsutake mushrooms and how rare they are and how complicated of a supply chain it is to get them from the Pacific Northwest to the people that pick them, that go out into the, these woods, to then people that 
uh, buy them on the side of the street, then getting them to the shipping ports, then making sure that they're preserved properly, and then they're shipped over to um, all over the world. And then, you know, there's cultural significance behind them. They mean it's like a really important gift in Japan. Um, they tried to grow them in Europe. And so the book is about this web of how this mushroom, this Matsutake mushroom, there's like this whole community around it. And there's this whole um, way that it connects the world together. So while reading this book, there's a word that got lodged in my head. And this is often in my art and in my practice. What happens is I'll hear a word or a phrase and just won't go away. And that's like a thread to pull on. So the word in this one was supply chain. And that was originally what Arcologies was called. It's called supply chain. So this is my very first sketch of what it does. And you can see there's a lot of revisions on here too. So we have, um, you know, I struck it out eventually and renamed it Ecologies. Uh, originally there was origins, way stations, and destinations. Again, thinking back to the, the Matsutake mushrooms and like thinking about how all that worked. I thought it'd be really cool if like, on the grid, the grid became a metaphor for a map or for a territory or land. Um, you can see I'm crossing things out here. The, the different colors represent different geological segments in time. Um, but a lot of the DNA is here. You know, we've got origins, which would become hives, way stations would become gates, destinations would become shrines. They were called giver, mover, taker. I had this idea about emitting bangs. I knew I wanted MIDI. There's this whole routes thing going on. Um, initially routes were hard coded. You'd like cycle through them. It took a while for me to crack the code of just pressing the keys to open and close the different ports. And this was all in Max for Live. So I was developing this uh, like I had done with my previous software. Um, trying to figure out, you know, like how, how to redraw the grid, the lights on the grid, you need to do it in a certain order. Um, most important stuff lasts because it draws over everything each time. So you're dealing with some really fun stuff with light. Um, it's figuring out interactions, how things need to work together. Little UI sketches. So this is part of my process. I had this idea, I'll write notes down, code a little bit, do a spike, make sure it works, come back to my notes, revise. Um, here you can see some drawings that Sage, my wife, made for explaining to me um, how our cat Bunting was sleeping with her at night. So in this one, Bunting was behind Sage with his arms around her neck. And this one, Bunting was in front with his little forehead on her chest. Um, but yeah, so here you can see an algorithm. This is the collision algorithm. So trying to figure out, you know, what when a signal and a structure collide, like what happens, what order did things need to happen in. You can see in here, I had revised all notes became signals. Originally the signals were actually, uh, had more information. They had like note information inside them. Uh, now they're really just like bangs. So if you're familiar with Max MSP or Pure Data or Orca, it's just a bang, it's just a signal. Um, losing my mind about Cartesian geometry, just X and Y. I've been developing with X and Ys for months now and I still get them mixed up and uh, I have to draw it. I still I still think X is up and down and Y is left and right or whatever. I don't even know what it is. Um, so pictures help me. Uh, yeah, so I was doing all this. I was just like really deep in figuring out data structures. Um, kind of keeping me, I enjoy all that stuff, but like really keeping me sane through that, even though this already was my sanity project, you know, it gets really tedious going into, okay, how do I want my, my object to look or how do I want my array to look? What's the best way to nest this data? Um, the aesthetics and like the mythology behind what it is I'm making is really important. So you see all this really complicated technical stuff. And then there's like a beautiful ecologies with kerning on it and then i would like go back and start thinking about okay what's like the story what's the concept what's like the vision and then i'd snap right back to designing methods and functions um i was running this in javascript and uh max has uh javascript support so then i actually was writing in javascript and then i had a test framework a light test framework i developed to make sure all my javascript worked properly 
um, data structures, boring, whatever. Um, this was like a really important unit test I wrote. Uh, one test to rule them all and in the darkness bind them. We had, I wanted to make sure that if there was a, um, that if there was a emitter structure here, it would properly do the thing with all of its neighboring structures. Um, here you can see the, the test. Uh, I've got some comments in here. Very brittle test. If you change the sorting uh, of the array, the test will break. This is intentional. And down here, uh, think of the children. Like, I mean, I probably spent, I don't even wanna take a stab at guessing how many hours I spent on this one test, but it was a very, very important test because when this test passed, it means that all of the collisions were working. Uh, Dan says, dang, this is really thoughtful. I wish I felt comfortable capturing the stage of pre-design in a format that's shareable like this. Yeah, it's just anything out of your brain is shareable. When I was making all this, I didn't intend to share it. Um, it's just kind of, I woke up this morning, I'm like, oh, you know, it'd be cool if I just like took screenshots of stuff, told the story. <sighs> yeah, more sketches from Sage, more those checks mean I got unit test passing. I'd wake up at, this was a drawing I made of myself, waking up at 3.30 a.m. on a Thursday, just seeing all the all the algorithms in my head. Um, this, <laughs> this looks so stupid in retrospect, but like it's actually really complicated to figure out when the signal actually collides with the structure. Is it right before? It's, it's like quantum mechanics stuff. Is it right before? Is it right on? Or is it right after? Because all that has implications with how the, how the images, how the images look and how the grid lights up and how the algorithms work. And so, you know, I'm just trying to figure out, I can't even tell what I settled on here. I think the answer was all of them. I needed to check. I needed to look a little bit ahead into the future to see if it was about to happen. I need to know if it was happening right now. And then I needed to know if it just happened. Yeah, okay, this is enough of this. Um, so then I kind of, yeah, I was just, I kind of started getting a bad feeling um, because this concept was really pure and clear in my head, but the implementation was getting really, really messy. So um, I had some, some folks that were kind enough to volunteer to beta test this for me. And um, the test results were not super awesome. And I, like it worked, but there was a lot of, lot of issues. So I introduced this quick menu on the far left column and um, originally the whole grid was just your map where you put your structures and stuff. And then I realized it was too hard to try to have all the interactions be, it, it, it was a mess. I had, where, where, where is it? It's not even, I think it's later. I added this one component and everything sort of collapsed under its own weight. And I was really, really scared that it wasn't gonna work. So we'll come back to that part. So meanwhile, I was collaborating with the art with my good friend, Teresa Berg. Um, she's an incredible designer and artist. Uh, we've known each other since third grade. I think, I don't know, one of my earliest memories is going over to her house and playing, um, I think it was Soul Calibur II on Dreamcast. And uh, when we were however old, we were in like fourth grade or fifth grade or whenever that came out. So, we worked on stuff over the years and I knew I wanted um, someone, not me, to help with the imagery around this. Cause like this was already such a cerebral exercise for me. I really wanted to invite someone into it and like give it a different perspective. And she's really good at branding. And she did this logo you see right, right here, this, this cool white thing. Um, She's really into analog stuff. She's really good at digital. Right now she's working on making dyes out of plants and stuff. So she has like little potions of dyes she's making like all over her house and she collects moss. And 
so we were sharing all this inspirational content back and forth on Discord, um, ancient maps and uh, Tai or Dao De Ching stuff. Uh, some of my favorite logos, some of our favorite logos, just graphic design that inspired us. Um, so all this was just kind of going into the the melting pot. <clears throat> um, these are some typographic treatments that she came up with. We're exploring like what's the brand personality of arcologies. I was still oscillating between ecologies and arcologies. Um, so it was supply chain, then it was ecologies. And then I wanted, ecologies felt too, um, too much of a constrained metaphor. Like I, I got really stuck with like mitochondria and cells and bacteria. And like, I, I needed like something bigger and more um, relatable. So arcologies was a word that was close to ecologies, but also got to that um, symbolism that you could more easily understand. So she made all these different variations. Um, the huge breakthrough is when we started about the symbols and the glyphs that would represent all the structures. This was uh, from the movie Alien. Um, they developed like a semiotic standard. So on the Nostromo, you'll see all these icons everywhere and they all actually mean something. And there's a, you know, a rational order to all of them. So Teresa had this incredible idea to take tarot cards and start cutting them up with X-Acto knives. And this was the first time I saw the hive glyph. So this is a hive cut out of a tarot card. And then this is the first ever um, gate. So and then you can see the ports around it. And I got really excited when I saw this. So she went in and made this visual language for the world of arcologies. And um, it's a substitution cipher. So the logo actually says arcologies in this language that she developed. So that's the final logo. And I think it's really cool. So meanwhile, tragedy. Um, I I booted up I booted up my old patch this morning because um, I wanted to pull some screenshots out and it wouldn't even load and I tried like a lot of things to get it to load and it would just crash and I got the pinwheel of death and that makes me really sad because it wasn't doing that a month or two ago so I don't know if there was like an update or if the file got corrupt or something um, I have some other screenshots but I was not having a good time. I was um, I was trying to develop this thing and it just wasn't happening. Uh, these were results from the beta test. So people um, filled out a little form for me. People were having problems with it. Um, this is a, it's kind of small. This is the kind of stuff I was working on. Um, on the left, you have JavaScript and on the right, you have Lua that does the same thing. So in JavaScript, I'm like, trying to find these polyfills to do things like for each loops because JavaScript doesn't have that out of the box. And if you want to know how big your object is, you've got to write like a polyfill for it. Meanwhile, uh, in Lua, which is what Arcologies is written in today, these are what these look like. So JavaScript's an amazing language. It's what the internet runs on. It's really good at a lot of things. It's not good at writing interactive music software like this. And I uh, wrote 1,500 lines of unit tests, and it didn't matter. It just, it just didn't matter. So, yeah, the the the, the quick menu, the the quick menu is what did it in because it caused the whole like foundation of this thing to just disintegrate. So I shelved it and um, started working with Norns, which is another another tool from Monom. Um, it's a sound computer based on a Raspberry Pi. It has quarter inch inputs and outputs. Um, you get to SSH into it, manage your files. It has an onboard synthesizer, sampler, uh, really, really excellent API and documentation, um, really fun to work with. So I made this little script called Dronecaster, which just simply makes a drone. And I made this in like in a couple days and I was like, wow, that was really fun. And 
you know, I'm mourning the loss of arcologies and I kind of thought that it was never going to happen. And then I had the idea, well, can I actually do this in, on Norns? And yes, yes, I can. So, um, this is the very next page in my notes after all the, all the sorrow we were just looking at with me trying to make this work in max. Um, I'm doing trigonometry, which I think is really fun. So this is me refreshing myself about Sokotoa and how that works because I'm trying to figure out how to draw the analysis um, graphic. And to go from worrying about how to make sure you can count how many elements are in your object to, which is like down here on the fun level for me, to figuring out how to design a really rad user interface that shows you what your program is doing is like way up here for me. And that just kind of goes to show you, it's like my notes are just trying to make JavaScript work and do all this stuff that I really isn't great at. And then all of a sudden I'm making all this really cool, fun stuff. So the Norns just totally blew the, blew the lid off of what was possible. Um, all these ideas are coming about how to make it work, what I wanted to do. Uh, here I'm trying to figure out just how I want to make divisions work with metabolism and pulses, sketching out the UI, um, trying to figure out like the flavor of the objects and what or the structures and what attributes they're going to have. Yeah, so I made a watercolor. Um, this was in my mind's eye. It was a uh, kind of a vista of the arcology and just gives me that feeling, you know, it's like my art's always been um, inversely proportional to the amount of pain or sadness or suffering that I'm feeling. And it's been a, it's like alchemy. It's like a way to transmute my feelings and emotions and a way to process what's going on in the world. So uh, yeah, 2020 has been a great year for art for me. Um, so here's the final UI. Really, really happy with how it turned out. Really proud of it. This is the home page. Um, this is the settings page where you can save and load. Uh, the cell designer page. So this is where you design all your structures and configure them. This is that where you pick all your structures. Uh, have really nice, big, chunky UI that's also really informative and also really minimal. You know, I I feel like I, I just, it's it's so it's so gratifying when you get to like check off all those boxes. You know, it works, it's fun, it looks good, it's minimal. Like if you can do all those things, that's just that's just so rewarding to me. Um, and here's the analysis page. So this was that the trigonometry that I was showing you that went into making this this work. So this is going to show you. Uh, what your arcology is doing. Yeah, so that is that is that fallen empires. So the the M4L version is still up on my GitHub. If you want to salvage through the wreckage and see see what you can see, um, it was really it was really painful to let that one go, but I'm really glad I did. Because now we're here and we've got we've got this. So, um, I mean, the other benefit about doing all that work in Max and Max for Live was I figured out all the concepts and how I wanted everything to work. So when it came time to do this in Lua on Norns, I wasn't really designing the software anymore. I had that all pretty much figured out. It was more just making it work and making it look good. So the, the design already existed and now it was just executing. So development of Arcologies pretty much started right around the 1st of August, like the, the Norns version of it started right around the 1st of August. And this is, this is all I did in my free time all month, you know, before work, after work, on weekends, uh, between meetings, like scrawling things on pieces of paper. So here we are, August 30th and it's release time. So this is available for download right now. Um, it's a Maiden, which is the package manager that comes with Norns. 
Um, and then it's also available on my GitHub page. Um, so now we're going to build an arcology together. And I thought it'd be really fun to build an arcology using one of every structure. And I'll just go in order. So this is also kind of doubled as like a quick primer to um, what each one does. Um, if anyone has a structure they want me to start with, uh, feel free to throw it in the chat. Otherwise, I was just going to go in chronological order. Um, it's been really fun playing with this the last few days because it it's like sort of tells you things, kind of teaches you things. Um, just randomly seeding something and starting to take elements away or You get some things that are really beautiful and you get some things that are really anxiety inducing. <laughs> um, the seed function is really, it's opinionated, but it is it is pretty dumb. It doesn't, um, like for example, you can make a whole bunch of, you can make a totally inert system uh, that doesn't really talk to itself and doesn't really make anything interesting. Or you can make something that kind of works or you can make something that doesn't work at all. It's so eventually I think I want to do something that makes it a little bit more intelligent. Like for example, if you've got a sound making structure and you randomly seed, there's a chance that there's going to be no other structure that's actually talking to it. So it's kind of a, a waste of space. Um, but let's just get started. Um, so uh, I'm going to set the BPM. And I like, like B is probably my favorite. And um, I really like harmonic minor too. So actually, no, no, it's a day of celebration. Let's do, uh, let's do major pentatonic. All right, so hives are where, where Arcologies typically start. It's the default structure when you um, create any new, when you press any empty key, you're going to make a hive. So we just made a hive and it's creating a bunch of signals. Um, I don't want to be in 16 today. I think I want to do something a little bit different. So I just set this to 10. So that means that there's 10, there's going to be 10 beats in a bar essentially. And you can see up here, these little dots show that there's only 10 now. If we crank that up, it's going to go to 16. You can go all the way down to 1. Um, so we're going to do, yeah, let's do 10. Actually, let's do 15. Yeah. And then for our hive, um, I'm going to set the metabolism, keeping with this 5 theme. I'm going to set it to 5. So now you see there's going to be five beats between each signal that comes out. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's our first structure. And that's what I call one of the fundamental structures. So we're not hearing any sound yet. So let's get some sound going. Um, I'm going to make a shrine. So shrines play notes via the onboard super collider engine. And um, it, they default to whatever uh, your root note is. So since they only play one note, it makes an assumption for you that you're probably gonna wanna play that one note in um, the key you're in. There's also velocity. Um, you can copy and paste these too. So we could do something like this and like make a whole bunch of other ones. I just put those all at the same place. So now we're getting a chord of three of the same note, which isn't very interesting, but we're gonna put this here and this here and this here. Open up some ports. So you can copy and paste really quickly, but I'm gonna, the, the challenge for today is to see if we can make something interesting with only one of each of the structures except tunnels we're, we're going to need two tunnels all right so we've got um what is this 
we have a B every five steps. Cool. Uh, let's add a gate in. Um, yeah. So gates, third fundamental structure. Gates are going to reroute the flow of signals. And then when um, a closed port is hit by a signal, it's gonna invert all of its signals. So let's add our next structure to do that, which will do the rave. So raves, are like your random number generator and they're going to randomly um, every beat they or every time their metabolism lines up with the uh, master transport they're going to randomly open and close all their ports and then send signals out so you can see this one is he's he's randomly opening and closing these we have no control over that and when that happens He's sending a signal to this gate here, and then gates, if an empty port is hit, it inverts all of its ports. So between this hive and this rave, the ports are being inverted. So now we have this interesting pattern happening where this, this gate is oscillating between two different states. Um, what's our next structure? Next up, we have the topiary, which is probably one of my favorite structures. It's it's maybe tied for first. Topiaries are just like shrines, but they have eight notes instead of one. So every time a note's played, it advances the pointer to the next note. And you can change all those notes if you don't like them. So when you create a topiary, it's going to randomly seed eight notes in the scale you're in but you can go in and change it. So if I didn't want this C sharp four, I could move this to oh, a B instead. And now it's gonna remember that and play that note instead. Like shrines, it's going to reroute the signals when it comes out. So we've got five structures now and we have a lot of really interesting signal patterns happening. Um, here you can see these ones are canceling each other out. So signals, if they hit each other, if they land, if they were to occupy the same space at the same time, they cancel each other out. Uh, they can, however, pass each other. So think about them as like sine waves or something, and they can go past each other as long as they don't land on the same cell at the same time. It's, it's only, it's only like... Here you see at precisely the same moment they hit. And that doesn't matter if they're going northeast, south, or west. That's just signals are incredibly flat. They're incredibly, um, I, I use the word dumb, but that's not really the right word. Like primitive is probably a better, a better way to, way to describe it. Uh, and just to show, um, So this is the entire signal class. It's just 31 lines. All it cares about is um, it's X and Y, which direction it's moving, and that's it. All signals move at the same speed, at the same rate, and they do the same thing. They know nothing about cells, and cells know nothing about signals from a, from a programming standpoint. Okay, what's next? Um, 
let's put it over here. I forget what's next in our list. Uh, domes. So domes are Euclidean rhythm generators. Um, I actually don't want this on the same row as a as our hive. So this is going to make um, Euclidean rhythms for us based on the metabolism and the pulses. So metabolism, think of it as the denominator and then pulses as the numerator. And then the way the Euclidean algorithm works, um, the Euclidean rhythm algorithm works, is it's going to divide your, your numerator equally across the denominator. So it's going to try to make our, our pulses equally spread across our 16 steps here. Uh, we could change this down to, you know, nine or something. So now we're getting into some irregular time. Our arcology is in 15. We have a hive that's working in fives. Now this this one's working in nines. Um, okay. Great. What's next? Ah, uh, the maze. Um, we're gonna put the maze up here. So mazes are Turing machines or analog shift registers. So they're going to have a probability and the higher the probability, the more likely it is the pattern changes. If the probability is at zero, the pattern is gonna be locked. And if we turn this up and increase the metabolism, you'll see these little dots start to populate and that shows us what our pattern is and that's going to match to how it sends out the signals. So I want to make um, a really chaotic one. Uh, we've got a pretty, a pretty steady arcology right now, so I want to introduce some, some chaos into the system. Um, all right, let's make some more noise then. So um, our next structure, I think, is the crypt. And uh, let's put that. Let's put that over here. So the crypt is your sampler. You get to load samples into the norns and then play them back. Uh, I've got kind of a standard kick snare hi-hat pack loaded right now. I'm actually really proud of these ones. I synthesized all these from scratch, which um, was really fun. I never, that was a new thing I was learning this year, how to do that. So you've also got a level and that will let you um, change the volume. So I put this, this structure just on the other side of this of these signals coming down from the maze because I wanted an interference pattern to happen. Um, Cause everything's two dimensional on here. So, you know, most DAWs or music is organized left to right and you have one dimension, which is time. And this we're moving through time, but then we're also, it's kind of three dimensional in that way. Cause we're moving through time, but then we're also moving up and down and we're moving left and right. So because these are moving down and these are moving to the right, they can cancel each other out and create an interference pattern and make our rhythm even more interesting. And this gets to the part of arcologies that really interests me is that I want to set parameters around what's random and sculpt that into something that I find aesthetically pleasing. So that's why the seed that the seed feature is like, it's kind of silly to me because it's it's a great way to get started, but it's not, you know, that the core use case isn't seed and just listen to it. It's not like a, a generative album or something. That's to kind of give you ideas about what's possible. What's really fun for me with this is to tune in the, the parameters and something so that it generates things that are aesthetically pleasing to me. And I wanted to be able to control all of that. Okay, so we've got our crypt. Um, okay, so to my point, 
Veils are like shrines and topiaries, but they play a random note, but you can control that random note. It's somewhere between zero, there's two parameters, zero and a hundred for min and max. Um, the min can't be more than the max, and the max can't be less than the min, so they're clamped together like this. And what it does is it plays the notes inside the scale in that percentage range. So in our, in our scale of B major pentatonic, this veil is going to play the notes, randomly choose a note between 60% and 75%. So I'm going to move this up here. And then I'm going to open the ports. It's a bit much. That's pretty good. Uh, I want it to be lower. I've already got some higher stuff. Thanks, Dan. All right, so we got this little melody. So I think that it's. Um, I like it when it plays, but I think it this this Turing machine is a little bit too chaotic. So I'm gonna bring the probability down. I'm gonna bring the metabolism down too. So that's gonna give it a higher probability of staying the same, and it's also gonna be easier to recognize the patterns when it repeats because it's a smaller duration. So it should generate some little. Um, rhythmic motifs for us, but then the veil will change the pitch on that. So we have the same kind of ostinato rhythm happening, but then we have different pitches happening. Great. Okay, solariums. These are so much fun. Um, Solariums store up signals as charge and then release them. So it's another way to control the flow of signals. Um, I think... Okay, I know what we're going to do with this. We're going to move this right here. And then open these ports. So now what happens is once this thing's charge hits four, which is the capacity right now, all the ports invert and then it spits them out and then the ports revert back. So what that means is it's going to gain charge from these two structures and then once it hits the capacity, it's gonna release that signal to our crypt over here and play that. So it doesn't care where it gets the four from, from these two, because those are the ports that are open. And then we'll see it invert. Oh, I guess we don't see it. We don't see it invert because it happens so fast. It's like instantaneous. Um, on the beat, it just inverts all the ports, spits out the signals, and then switches back. And that happens in the millisecond that the charge is, goes down to zero. So keeping with our five theme, I'm gonna change the capacity down to three. So that's going to make the kick a little bit more regular. And then it's also uh, a div divisible by 15. So that kind of fits into the theme of what I'm trying to do right now. All right, UXB. So this is our MIDI, our, our, our MIDI device. Um, I've got a synthesizer set up over here off camera but this is just going to drone for us because it only plays one note um, I do not want F sharp Get it in. 
a sweet spot. Well, before I mess more with that, let's add the next structure, which is also going to be talking to the peak here. Um, let's put it. Let's put it over here. So next up is the casino, which is just like a topiary, but it um, talks to me instead. that fucking pit. Alright, <laughs> so let's add in a tunnel. Tunnels let you teleport signals across the grid. Uh, tunnels have a network, so the network is A through Z, so there's 26 different networks. Um, tunnels are really beautiful. They've only got one attribute like that, and I just, I love really simple basic structures that are just easy to understand. So this tunnel's right here. It's getting signals from our uh, topiary. Um, is there any region on our ecology that needs more signals, or maybe needs less signals? Maybe we want to cancel some out. Yeah, let's actually cancel them out up here by the casino uh, because, I don't know, it might be fun. So signals are gonna come in right here and then I want them to pop out this way just for fun because that's the opposite direction. And we're on network A. Cool, so you see the signal come in here and then it's gonna come out right here. then it's going to cancel, it's going to interfere with some of these, so we just added a little bit of variation to our, um, our, our, our MIDI signals that are being sent out. only two structures left. Um, they are the uh, crow structures. So we've got an aviary, which is just like a shrine and or just like a uh, UXB. Um, you can't see it, but I've got uh, a USB going to crow near a rack, and then crow's going into a plots QPOS and then a black hole DSB2 before it's coming back out to my audio interface. And then I've got um, a drum, a drum setting on plots. So this is just going to be playing this one note for us. Let's see if we can find it. trying to fit things in different frequency ranges. All right, we're almost done with Tlon. Um, I'll add, all right, I wanna add a lot more percussion now. So I'm going to use our crazy uh, maze we have to uh, 
just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to add, <laughs> cool, all right, I'm gonna add a tunnel here. This is a more practical use of a tunnel. And then I'm gonna have this tunnel go underneath this, this signal flow right here. So I'm gonna open up another tunnel. But I want this to be on a different network than the other tunnels. So I'm gonna change this network to B. So now when these signals enter this tunnel, they're gonna exit this tunnel. So they just go whoop, they just go right underneath. Right over. Now it's a tunnel, it's underneath. It's gonna go right underneath, and then they're gonna end over here. This is our little crow corner. So the structure that the second structure for crow is a forest, which is like a topiary and a casino. So we have our array of eight different notes. You can manually move the index you want. So if you want to nudge, nudge it forward or backward, or um, like repeat something, you can kind of perform that. With the crow structures, you can set the output pair. So it's either one and two or three and four. So that's uh, your your uh, octave is one and three, and then your trigger is. Um, two and four. I got the trigger going up to a, a little malt and then that trigger is being sent out to a bunch of different places. So Crow lets you actually control a lot of your Euro rack from just a couple a couple outputs. So this is an arcology with exactly 15 structures in it. Um, over on the analysis page we can Oh no, sorry. We have we have what? We have 15 structures plus three extra tunnels. So we have 18 in total. And you can see that here in our analysis screen. Um, this four, these are our tunnels. So I have tunnel selected. Whatever structure you have selected is gonna highlight on the pie chart. And then we have our massive um, most of the population is made up of signals. Whenever you highlight something, it shows you both how many there are here and here. It shows you where they are on this little mini map of the grid, and then it also highlights them on the grid. So that's really useful if you forgot where the stupid rave was and you just have to get over to the rave. You can highlight it and then press it, and then you know. is going to show you you selected the rave and then you can come in and change it and do something different with it. Um, all these structures have docs built in so if you forget how they work you just scroll down and you got a little a little reminder. Uh, it's by no means comprehensive but it should be enough to jog your memory. So let's save, let's save. So we go to the save menu. All right, so this is called the Twan. So that's been saved. Um, if you have, and you can see um, that the save succeeded. So that's going to be written to uh, that's written to your dust data arcologies directory. So now we've got this Talon Arcology and Talon preset. And you can 
restore and share your archaeologies with other people this way. Uh, you just send them both of these files and then they can open them up. So that's archaeologies. Um, thanks so much for watching. I uh, so so happy to uh, just be be done with it. Be done with version one. Um, got a bunch of ideas for what's happening next. Uh, September is going to be a month of bug fixes. I'm going to try to not add any new features. I want to get just all the bugs out and have it be really solid and dependable. And um, yeah, even when I was over in Matron over here, I saw there was another there's another bug of some sort that's I don't know, it's not coming back. But so as more people test it, we're gonna see um, more edge cases and more ideas. There's already been some feature requests for really obvious things that I didn't even consider, but totally need to happen. But yeah, any any questions or anything I can answer? Um, if not, um, we'll wrap up. Uh, and I'm around all day. If anyone wants to have one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls, I'll help get this installed and get you up and running with it. Um, just message me, DM me wherever, and yeah, go from there. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for stopping by. This is really fun. Yeah, and then I've got um, some more videos up that are in depth of each each of the structures. So you can jump on YouTube and just go on the playlist and um, it will walk you through every single structure. I spent a lot more time than I did here. This was like a lightning lightning round. Uh, do you have more watercolors? Yeah, um, so thanks, that's, that's really kind. I'm glad you enjoy those. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do watercolors for each of like the new packs or DLCs or whatever. So I've already got another one for um, crypts, which we didn't talk about, but that's just like a sample library that lets you share waves with each other and uh, yeah, I just, it's another, I really like kind of humanizing the, um, like, music, contextualizing it a bit with watercolors. It's like a, it's like the opposite medium of um, computers, because they're really messy and they're really analog, and uh, yeah, here's the original. So I just make them really small. And... There's another 2020 sanity measure, sanity preservation measure. Cool. Well, thanks so much, everybody. I hope you enjoy it. Have a lot of fun. Um, yeah, thank you. Goodbye.